Welcome to Developer Skill Sprints. This is David I, and I'm going to show you how to take beacons to the next level. There's my email address, there's my Twitter handle, and there's the short URL for my blog notes that accompany the Skill Sprint. You can use the technologies included in this Skill Sprint with Rad Studio and App Method, both with Object Pascal and C++ language. And you can use the beacon fence technology I'll show you on iOS, Android, and OS 10. What I'm going to cover in this skill sprint is how to build beacon fencing applications. We'll use the components for beacon fencing. We'll also go back and remind ourselves about the T-Beacon technology that was included in XZ8. And the beacon support that was added in Rad Studio XZ8 has been very well received by developers. It provided a runtime library and components that use these Bluetooth low energy devices called beacons that broadcast advertising data using the iBeacon from Apple or Alt Beacon specifications. Beacons are being used in retail, manufacturing, healthcare, sports venues, cities, and other industries and locations around the world. One sample use case is a retail store beacon development. The customer uses a store app on a smartphone the store app knows who you are because you've logged in. It has some historical sales data. As the customer moves around the store, personalized information can be displayed on the app through push notifications based on users' past shopping behaviors and what departments they are in in the retail store. For example, as the customer enters the handbag zone, uh, handbag offers are shown in the app. As the customer picks up a purse near a specific beacon, info about the bag manufacturer shown in the app. This can be used throughout the different departments, the toy section, the appliance section, and so on inside of a store. So what is a beacon fence? Beacon Fence is a new developer proximity solution from a market of technologies. It gives you GPS-free indoor and outdoor location tracking and events that take place as the user of the smartphone application moves inside of an area or inside of a zone. Beacon Fence has a mapping technology that allows you to define rectangular and radial zones for any physical layout. The mapping tool allows you to visually draw a layout of physical locations and beacon placements. With that information, you can track the location down to inches or centimeters. You can track the intersections when a user of a smart device enters or exits. You can have callback events that take place. You can tie that into your enterprise infrastructure. Beacon fence-based applications will run on iOS, Android, and OS 10 today. And in the future, as Microsoft delivers beacon-based technologies in releases of Windows 10, we'd be able to add the same technology. Now, compared to geofencing, beacon fence-based applications are designed for environments where distance accuracy is very important. And you can try Beacon Fence today for free. All you need is to be a current Rad Studio XZ8 update subscription customer. Then from inside of the ID, you can launch the Get It Package Manager. And you'll see for Beacon Fence a Buy button. Clicking on the Buy button will take you to our shop site where you can purchase a free Pluto level license for Beacon Fence. That goes in your shopping cart. You place your order. You get an email address from our shop site with a web activation link where you can register the serial number for your beacon fence. And then you go back into Get It Package Manager and the Buy Now button changes to an Install button. You can click on the Install. It'll download the package files, the library files, the header files, the interface units, even a sample application. The license allows you to build a beacon fence application made up of up to three beacons for a specific location that's no more than 1,500 square feet or 150 square meters. And you can build one application with the Pluto license and deploy it to your users. If you want to upgrade your plan for larger beacon fence-based applications and larger numbers of beacons, contact our Embarcadero sales office or reselling partners to upgrade your plan. So let's take a look at a demonstration of using beacon fence in action. We'll design an office layout, we'll place the beacons, and then build an application using the map information, using the zones and the path information that you design in the map tool. As a reminder of doing proximity based application development using beacons, we've got a simple sample that ships with XE8. It's the beacon component example. It's got a T-Beacon component, which allows you to watch monitorized beacons. 
you set that property to a collection of beacons. In my case, I've just got one beacon here with its UUID and major and minor value of one and one. And then two events on beacon enter, on beacon exit. I've got a, a button here just to enable the beacon and disable the beacon and to uh, clear out the memo lines. Those event handlers for the beacon on beacon enter, it displays the UUID, the major minor number in the distance, and when it exits, it just lets me know that a specific beacon with UUID major and minor value has disappeared, and we display the current beacon count of the number of beacons that we found. So let's go and run this application on our iOS device, in my case, my iPhone 6. First, the app starts and it says, uh, allow the beacon component to access your location while use the app. And I'll say, yes, we'll allow that. And then let's go and click the start button and it finds the new beacon. This is my beacon here. It's about half a meter away, a little less maybe. So I just connected the beacon. In this case, it was a uh, rad beacon from Radius Networks. So I unplugged it from uh, the power source and then replugged it back in and got the beacon showing up again. To build beacon fence based applications, you need to make sure that you've purchased at least the free Pluto level of license and then you can upgrade from there by contacting our offices and reselling partners. Under tools, get it package manager, you'll see that I've already purchased a beacon fence 1.0 and I've installed it into my Rad Studio XZ8 Subscription Update 1 IDE. So we'll create a new project. And now we have a choice of two different components that come with beacon fence. One is a beacon zone fencing component. The other is the beacon map fencing component. So let's look at beacon zone component first, add a beacon zone fencing component. Uh, you can set a base beacon UUID if you want. There are options for a beacon manager, the same properties you saw using the T-beacon component of scanning time, sleeping time, and so on. For zones, you can create zones using the zone item editor. And here you can specify beacons that make up that zone, their UUID, their major and minor values. You can also decide whether they'll do something when your proximity is near, immediate, far, or when someone moves out of range. Beacon zone fencing allows you to define zones based on beacons without using a map. You can also use the beacon map fencing component. You can use both zone-based fencing and map-based fencing in the same app. So if we go to beacon map fencing, you'll see it's got the beacon manager options again at the top level. We also need to set a paint control where we want to display the map. So for example, if we wanna guide a customer through a department store and show them where they are on the map, then you would use the map fencing for that. We might, for example, put a panel down on our user interface and add a toolbar and other things. Then we would tell map to paint on the panel. Right mouse click to say edit fencing map, you can clear the map, you can save the map to an external XML file. You can also load an existing map that you have from a file. We'll right mouse click and say edit the fencing map. We'll create a new map object. We can specify its fill color. First thing we'll want to do is set uh, measured units, for example, inches, meters or centimeters for the map. Let's add a bitmap. I've got the Scotts Valley office floor here. It's important to use the option to scale the map property. And again, we recommend that you do that before you add any other objects. That way you can provide the physical measures on the map for the image that we've just selected. So we just need to click two points on the image and indicate the distance between them. So for example, on our office map, click scale the map tool. Let's go and drag uh, the distance here across here, which is which is 25 feet. So let's go measure this opening. And we need to set the distance in inches. Well, that's 25 feet. So 25 feet is 300 inches. So now we've defined the scale. And just a reminder, if you delete the map, uh, you lose all of the the parts that are there. So we can go and save this map file name. So this is Scotts Valley. All the information is saved in an XML file. Now we can add 
uh, different zones. So let's just add a rectangular zone. Uh, that's the DevRel Studio area. Or it could be the Toy Store. And we can select that object and give it a name. Give it a color, your choice. And then let's choose a polygonal zone. And I want to create an irregular shape. We're going to start about here and go to this beam. And then up here, over and then click the right mouse button to finish the shape. So now we have a, a T-shape when someone comes in the front door. We might put a beacon to start there. They might go into the studio and then they might come out and maybe go over into other departments. We can also place beacons on the map either as they are in real life or where you're going to place them. So we'll click the create beacon button. And for example, we might put a beacon uh, here at that location and place another beacon over at the uh, the far end, one at the turning point here, at the extremities, for example, and another turning point there. And then for each of these beacons, we could give them a name, DevRel Studio, the DevRel area, maybe this beacon here is, the, is for uh, the DevRel doorway. We could put in the GUID for that beacon and the major and minor number. You could also specify a path. So a path, for example, might be where the person comes in and then goes into the DevRel area, maybe goes to the center here, uh, goes in and walks into the studio, or maybe they continue from this point and go to the end. They might also go visit an office here. And we could set up a description for this node. This might be the example, enter the offices. You could use this information, for example, to display uh, the user interface or send a message to someone who's in the offices that, that someone has, has arrived and, or is moving towards the studio. If you want to show all the objects that you have and be able to select and edit them, uh, you can go and click on each one and you'll notice they're highlighted in the map for each of the paths, for example, and the nodes, the zones, the beacons that you've placed. So you can place them down and then go and set all of their object properties uh, using this tree view. We want to set information about points of interest. For example, we could say, so this node, for example, might be the entrance to the DevRel Studio. We can go and give it a name value pair or a set of description values. And then at runtime in your code, you can use that those descriptions, key value pairs in your applications. Then we can save all of those changes. We'll put a button down in a toolbar and we'll align the rest of the map to the rest of the client area. And then on the button, we can go and create an on-click handler. And we need to, we need to turn on meek and map fencing. And if we were using zone fencing, we'd have to enable that as well go back and make sure that we have all the options that we want for the map options. Do we want to color the beacons? Do we want to highlight any zones? Show the current position? Maybe that's one of the things we want to do. Uh, show zones, uh, show paths on the map, and so on. It's your choice. We can color a beacon, which will display beacons of different colors based on proximity. So green for intermediate, near for yellow, far for orange, you can highlight zones, a show zone, show paths, and then you've got for beacon fencing, got proximity events, for example, on beacon enter, on beacon exit that you might want to hook, on beacon proximity gets triggered every time the proximity value changes of the user who's running the app uh, to the beacons in your map. There's also zone enter and exit events that are triggered when the calculated position is with inside of one of your zones that you defined. There's also an API for computing the position. There is a default position calculator that's built in using the particle filter algorithm optimized for localization tasks. And particularly, this particle filter corresponds to a Monte Carlo localization algorithm. There's also on calc position triggered when the 
position is calculated, estimating position when uh, position is estimated, and triggered when the calculated position changes on position estimated. So you can hook all of these different events. And so there's the map that shows up, and I haven't hooked all the different events. First, it'll say, since it's beacon-based, I've got to give access to the location. And then we could put logic in, for example, to display the look position and follow along as we are connected uh, to the beacons from our smartphone or tablet app. And here's an example that ships with beacon fence. It's another example that uses a map. In this case, it's a map of our offices in Spain. We're gonna add the map to our project and then bring up the map editor and show that map. And some zones are defined plus locations of beacons like we saw in the map editor example. We've got some key value pairs set up for different nodes in the map for people's offices, as well as for uh, some of the cubicles that are there. You can look at the different beacon values, make sure those are okay. Uh, if you make any changes, you can save those changes or, or forget about them. So we can choose platform iOS, Android, or OS 10. Here we'll target a Nexus 9. And then it will install the APK file to the Nexus 9. And now we've got the application running. Uh, the black dot will show us where the current smartphone is. Uh, there's The application has some options in the toolbar for turning on and off the position information, the paths, the zones, and so on. So you can play around with those uh, once you have the beacon fence installed and you get some beacons and put them in your own locations. There's options in the sample for hooking into the calculations for proximity using the particle filter al algorithm. Also, you can get a display of the beacon information, the list of beacons, uh, the current positions, the major minor, the distance, proximity, and so on. You can search for the different points of interest and then bring up information about those points of interest, displaying the key value pair data for each of those. And then as the smartphone moves around, you'll see the different zones firing, the little black dot, and the beacons that are found uh, by the application in a proximity. And again, here, we can look and see as the person enters the zone, the zone gets highlighted with a different color, and you can get information about what's nearby uh, that uh, the current location, what the point of in points of interest are, uh, someone's at office, maybe a meeting room that you're trying to find. So you saw in the demo there the when they were at the threshold between two different zones, then the information is displayed as you're transitioning, exiting one zone, entering another zone. And here you can see as the person is, who has the smartphone is wandering around the offices and seeing what's nearby for someone they, they may need to visit. At any point in time, you can build your application to show information about what beacons are being are within proximity and here it, the application shows that it can load different maps with different zones and different beacons for different locations so you could build that into your application for your customers where they might be on multiple buildings or maybe even multiple floors and how you would link these together and load them dynamically at runtime and look at the node information, look at the beacon information, uh, look at the zone information. I have some links here for you, and all of these links are listed in my blog post, so just use the short URL, embt.co slash skills hyphen beacon fence, uh, uppercase B, uppercase F, and you'll find a blog post with some additional information as well as all of these links. Now, these links talk about Beacon Fence, about building proximity-aware applications using beacons, what to do with beacons before you code, and we had a skill sprint by Brian Alexakis earlier in this series about using beacons. Here are some additional links 
to companies that are using beacons today, including Macy's department stores, Marriott Hotels, Lord & Taylor clothing stores, London's Regent Street, made up of multiple stores, uh, KLM's Schiphol Airport, uh, the Amsterdam Beacon Mile, and even our San Francisco 49ers Levi Stadium is using beacons. So you can check out those articles by clicking on the links. And again, all of these links and learning resources are on my blog post about today's Skill Sprint. The short URL is there at the bottom. Next time, the Skill Sprint will be using dependency injection for maintainable code by Nick Hodges, who's the author of Coding in Delphi and knew the book More Coding in Delphi. You can see the full schedule and replays for the skill sprints at embt.co slash sprints15. Uh, Nick's skill sprint will take place next Tuesday, August 18th at 6 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. Just want to remind you of the special offers going on right now until the end of the month. If you purchase Rad Studio or upgrade to Rad Studio, you'll get these free bonuses, the VCL and FireMonkey Premium styles and Windows 10 styles, the Meta Converter Basic, which helps you convert VCL applications to FireMonkey applications, the ebook version of Marco Cantu's Object Pascal Handbook, which is now also available in print. Uh, the ebook has been updated with additional chapters and updates that Marco made over the last several months. Also, we have more coding in Delphi by Nick Hodges ebook as part of the special bonus if you purchase Red Studio XZ8. We also have the special upgrade offer for owners of XZ3 and earlier. If you purchase an ad update subscription, you can save up to 45% off the regular price of XZ8. You can find all of these offers and the details about them on the Rad Offer page at Embarcadero.com, www.embarcadero.com slash Rad Offer. And now it's time for Q&A. And also, there's my email address. So if, there, if you've got some additional questions or we, don't, we can't get to all of them, uh, just send me an email, and I'm very happy to reply uh, to your questions. Uh, well, there are plans to support Windows in the future. So Windows was the one particular combination we're not supporting right now. Yeah, the, I mean, with Windows 8 and Windows 10, you can use Bluetooth LE. So you could, when we've shown demos of that, working with devices like heart rate monitors and so on. And these beacons are uh, Bluetooth LE devices, but they have a different, a different payload or a different format uh, from the standard sort of characteristic and services and so on. But, you know, Microsoft has been talking a lot about the Internet of Things and that they want to provide support. Uh, they just haven't released it. If, maybe you know anything else, Jim. They did release a few things like the core Windows version for Raspberry Pi. I think that was announced yesterday or today that they've released that Windows 10 version, but, but nothing yet about specifically about beacons. But once they have beacon APIs that we can hook, then under the covers we can take this same technology and just give you a Win32, Win64 uh, version of uh, of the of the runtime libraries that we need to hook into the APIs. Uh, you'll see that when you install and download the uh, beacon fence, you'll see that we have the implementations for you know the subdirectories for release and debug for iOS, Android, and OS 10. Uh, uh, I should mention we we don't have a simulator for iOS version because you really need the hardware, right? really need the, the beacon hardware itself. There's no way that I know of to simulate beacons in the Iowa simulator, so we don't support that. Um, but yeah, we should be able to, once Microsoft uh, does uh, its work, use the same T-Beacon component, the runtime library APIs that you would use today, uh, the beacon zone fencing and beacon map fencing. Uh, that's all, you know, abstracted from the the Beacon runtime library that we already had, the Bluetooth LE runtime library as well, and then the calls into the operating system. So we we'll look forward to whatever Microsoft uh, provides us in APIs. It looks like uh, Windows 10 does add a, uh, a Windows devices Bluetooth advertisement namespace for support beacons. So Yeah, so we'll look forward to adding that uh, under the covers so that you can use your same apps and just rebuild them. 
So they support reports that uh, buying, downloading, installing the Pluto level worked very fast and flawlessly. So, yep. I, that's a, I did that as a slide, but I, I, I should probably record it anyway um, as, a, as a separate little video clip. Uh, you just go into Tools, Get It, Pack It, Package Manager, and you'll see the Buy Now button. You click Buy Now button. It'll take you to the shop site. It'll already put a uh, an entry into your uh, shopping cart, which is the Pluto um, beacon fence with a zero price tag. And then you just say purchase. You fill out your name and email address, hit purchase. Uh, there's no handling fees. It's zero dollar. And then you'll get an email that has information up with uh, with a registration key, so that you then uh, and a URL, you click on that URL and it will launch and register your to your EDN account the key that's associated with Beacon Fence. And then just close the Tools Get It Manager and go back and do Tools Get It Manager again and you'll see that Beacon Fence now has an install button. You click the install button and uh, then it installs the runtime libraries and the components that are required and they show up in the component palette as uh, Internet of Things, the two components there. And then you just start a new project or there's a sample project that, that is delivered as part of the whole thing. And you can look at that one or you can just say file new multi-device Delphi or C++ builder app. Uh, drag a zone fencing or a map fencing component down and go from there. And the magic is if you design all of your, you know, your layouts and your zones and your paths and so on, everything is calculated for you. You just hook the zone enter, zone exit and do whatever it is you want your app to do on zone enter and exit. You don't have to calculate anything unless you want to. Uh, all that work in the map designer or in the zone designer um, setting the properties of the zone uh, list. And you can mix and match. You could have a T-Beacon component that maybe welcomes you at the front door or you could define the front door as a zone, right? As you come in the department store or come in the warehouse or come in the office building or whatever it might be. So uh, that installation process is, is a mentioned. It's just very quick and painless for the Pluto version. And then contact our resellers or contact our sales offices if you want to use more beacons and bigger uh, locations and numbers of applications that you might want to build. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple questions here about the how, how accurate is the mapping as far as how accurate can the beacons be? Can it tell within Inches, meters. Yeah, it's, it's the person actually is. Yeah, it's inch. the The scale that the map defines is inches, centimeters, and meters. Um, and then, when if you use the map editor, you saw that I I had measured. I I brought a tape measure, you know, or maybe you want to use a laser range finder or something. And I measured different parts of our office different walls, the openings, uh, the size of conference rooms and so on. Oftentimes you'll already have that in, in some kind of architectural drawings or blueprints. Uh, but you have a couple, there's lots of ways that you can improve the accuracy. One is measuring properly. And the first thing we recommend when you create a new map, if you're going to use the map, the beacon fence map component, is that you use that button to set the scale. If you already know the scale, because a lot of architectural drawings will tell you there's, you know, what the scale is of a blueprint, for example. So you could enter that. Uh, the map allows you to drag, select uh, a, a, a range for the scale and then associate that. So I had measured like a conference room in Scotts Valley at 20 feet by I think it was 17 feet, something like that. Uh, but you could do that. It could be 17 feet, 5 inches, for example. Turn that into inches so you now get things down to inches. Um, the calculation is, you know, is done 
based on where you are in the zone. And, and it's very accurate. I, I, I don't know that we claim down to an inch. Uh, I guess I would have to sit there with a bunch of measuring tapes and precisely see where I, it says that I am in a room in a, in a mobile app using the, the beacon triangulate, you know, calculation and, uh, and see, you know, is that within two inches? that within three inches. Uh, I don't know that we claim a specific. You, you could go and look at the particle. Um, there's links in the help file and there's help. Uh, there's not a doc wiki, but when you install the beacon fence, you just put the component down, hit F1, and it brings up the help files. There's a, there's a, a help file that's, that's included in the download install uh, through get it. Um, and it talks about how we calculate the, the location and and points to I think some Wikipedia entries for uh, particle calculation and uh, but again if you if you think you have a better algorithm for figuring out you can you can take control and, and provide your own calculation uh, algorithm. I know that what I've read about the beacon specification is supposed to be fairly accurate, but it's going to vary from smartphone to smartphone and from beacon to beacon, and depending on, you know, factors like humidity in the air, I'm sure it can affect that as well, since water can absorb the signals. So there's probably a lot of things that can affect the actual specifics, but it's typically supposed to be fairly accurate. Things like what's in the wall, half, you know, half-inch steel, quarter-inch, I don't know, uh, some other environmental things. The I other thing I around think question was in the mapping component you can also zoom in so you can zoom way in to do more precise placement of beacons and paths and so on and nodes and you can even uh, once you've placed beacons if you know their location because you measure where the beacons are down to the inches then you can just set uh, beacons in a specific spot based on the, the location uh, properties on the right, or you can just drop them down and, and then it takes the location and you can move them around in the mapping editor. The other thing is you can, you can go and click on two beacons and you can define, if you want to, the distance between those two beacons. So if you've gone and measured the distance physically to two beacons that you've already placed, uh, you can key that in and that becomes additional data for the the distance calculation, the location calculation. So um, what is the responsiveness in as the person's moving around in, in milliseconds? Is it fairly quick that you see where the person's at or is there a lag or do you know how that works? Well, you saw, I think, that example at the end where they were walking around with it and there's calculations going on, but it, it tracks pretty accurately. It's not like you have to wait a few seconds. It was moving almost in real time as the as the person was carrying the phone uh, with them. So uh, I don't see much delay in calculating, in the calculation, for example. It's all native code, you know, op machine code uh, running under the covers. I think it depends on your user interface as well, but, uh, you know, you, um, what you're showing, oftentimes people aren't going to, you know, there's different kinds of applications that you might want. One is where you're just being presented information as you enter and exit a zone versus, you know, precise guidance, you know, which if you've got a hallway and a door, it'll get you down the hallway and to a door, right? Mm -hmm. For example. But, but other kinds of applications will just be telling you things about where you are. Uh, you're entering uh, one of the wings of the museum. You're, you know, 10 meters away from the Mona Lisa. Usually, you know, because you see the big crowd that's gathered in front of the Mona Lisa, that that's where the Mona Lisa is. You don't have to know precisely where it is on a wall unless you're the only person in the museum. And then, um, but it's, uh, it's very accurate. Uh, but I, you know, would you run into a wall because you were looking at your screen and not looking up? You probably should glance around. <laughs> a chair or a person or whatever. Uh, but the other kinds of applications will just deliver information like that shopping app uh, in a store 
uh, that you know you want to go to where the special is for the product you want. You know, unless you don't know the store, uh, it could precisely guide you um, to the spot where the jeans that are in your size are. Right now, retailers might do other things. They might send you on a certain route to entice you to buy other things as well. Um, but then you could give them feedback saying, why did you roam me all over the store when I was two aisles away? Um, I think Ikea wants you to make the travel through their whole store, right? Yeah. Uh, but they also have these little escape routes. If you know what you're doing, there's the little shortcut kind of corner that takes you through a wall and you bypass a whole bunch of stuff if you know what you're doing. So uh, we'll leave that kind of thing to the to the retailers and how they want to guide you through their store uh, to get what you want. So can an app for Beacon Fence be, work with all beacons, or does the app going to be designed to work specifically with a certain set of beacons in a certain map? Well, you always have to have the, if you've got a map defined, but you can, as you saw in that example at the end, that application, they were loading different maps. Uh, they were setting different options. So all the options you would set at design time, you could also set at runtime. Yeah. So you, you could load a map and load all the, and the XML file for it, which has all of the beacon locations and so on. So you could have a generic app that would just have a map, you know, a fencing map component. And the first thing you would do is call the load, uh, you know, load file method. And that would load up a map or whatever your application wants to do yep. and, and have all the nodes and paths and and beacon locations. The other way is if you use the lower level runtime library, uh, you can find all the beacons. We, we've shown examples. I think Brian Alexakis did this and we ship examples of, you know, generic applications and you can download beacon finding apps from the App Store and from Google Play that don't know anything about the environment they're in, but they know that there's beacons and how far away they are. Right. So you could write your own generic code, but the great thing about beacon fence and how the mapping works and zones work is you could save out, maybe it's downloadable from a, from a, a REST service or from some other place, and you could load the, the bitmap of the map and load the XML file associated with it and someone could provide a service uh, and a collection of like all the museums of the world um, if, if you know where the beacons are and what they're doing, right? Or you could use the low-level runtime library and go and figure things out, find beacons, and then type, have people's social network type in uh, the, uh, the name value pairs, the key value pairs of what that beacon means. It happens to be out in front of uh, McDonald's in, you know, somewhere in Manhattan, for example. So uh, where can we people buy beacons at? Uh, just search on the Internet for beacons. Uh, most electronic distributors, uh, you know, Aero Electronics or whatever, they, they'll sell you beacons. Uh, there's beacon stores. I just search on the Internet for beacons. Maybe you can buy beacons from Amazon. I don't know if they sell beacons. I bought yeah, them. Amazon has some beacons. They have the XY beacons. There's uh, Estimote, uh, Radius networks. All have beacons. There's a, you know, a lot. Of, where can I buy beacons on Google? It'll you'll get lots of places. Uh, again, in most countries, if you have a favorite electronics distributor, they're all selling. Uh, you know, some never beacons. Some of the vendors, I think Estimote was selling them directly as well. Gimbal, there's a bunch of radius networks. I, I guess I should put some links. I'll put some links to some some beacon sort of shopping sites, but it's a simple Google search. Um, will Beacon Fence be built into future versions of Delphi, or will, will it remain a separate add-on? It's a separate add-on. Um, how dependent are they on the physical... Uh, placement in rooms like height over floor, distance to walls, etc. Um, you could put, the, uh, for example, in our Spain office, they put them in the ceiling. On there, you can look up, and there they are. That way, they're there permanently. You don't 
have to, they're not sitting on someone's desk and the desk might get moved. Um, uh, in, in retail stores and other places, you'll usually secure the beacons. They might be hidden inside of a display case somewhere and pro maybe probably powered uh, electronically. My radius network uh, beacon, rad beacon, plugs into a, a USB AC adapter plug. You just plug it in. So, you know, you'd run AC. That way you don't have to worry about battery powered beacons and the batteries running out. So you can place them anywhere. You can place them on the wall, in the wall, behind a clock, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and as far as distance is concerned, uh, I guess, you know, if, if you put them, if you're doing an office or building, unless it's like a, you know, what is it, the vehicle assembly building is this huge it's the largest volume open space, I think, in the world, um, or a big stadium. Um, it shouldn't affect that much, you know, if you've got them halfway up a wall or down at floor level or in the ceiling. Probably the ceiling above where people would normally walk if you're using them for indoor navigation is probably the best place. That's where we usually have emergency lighting. There's AC power with lighting up there. So you could stick them if it's acoustical tiling. Those aren't going to affect too much the signal strength. If you put them in a you know a room that's got a lowered you know a, a lowered ceiling with acoustical tiling, stick them AC powered up above where people would normally walk down the center of a of a hallway or or you know unless it's a mile wide hallway, uh, it shouldn't affect the the location sensing at all. So I read that the um, the Bluetooth LE signal actually gets absorbed by water, and so um, you want it up high because if it's down low, having someone walk between you and the beacon can will absorb all that signal because we're mostly made of water, so it has to bounce around that person. So if it's up high, it's less likely to get interfered with by a person walking between you and the beacon. Um, but yeah, anything that's going to be between you and the beacon can interfere with that. So, but generally, jump on the ceiling is a good idea. Um, could so here's an interesting question: Could employees wear beacons, like on a key card, and then use that to open doors? Is there a way to make that work with the beacon fence technology that the uh, beacon moves around and then the um, the readers stay stationary? Well, you could, you can, you you need some computer device that's somehow connected to um, the door. So for example, for home automation at work, I've got a Verilite or um, Neospace box, which is a Linux subset that knows how to send a radio signal to a door lock to unlock a door. So uh, if I had some kind of uh, computer, maybe single board little computer that was somewhere nearby or some server that is picking up the, the Bluetooth signals from the beacon and could calculate and locate where you are and that you're in front of a door and then it would have to send something to some device that knew how to unlock that door. That's absolutely possible. Uh, the other way is, so if you know, if, they, if the person is just going to have a beacon versus if the person has their own smartphone and who doesn't, uh, as you're carrying around a smartphone, then if you build the application to just put a beacon near the door, the smartphone could send the signals to the to the box that knows how to open up a door, you know, unlock a door. So you could do it several ways. The person could have a smartphone or the person could just be wearing a beacon and then there's some other computer that knows where the door is and knows where that beacon is moving and when the person is in front of the door, uh, it would unlock the door. So there's a couple ways to do it with person having smartphone and no beacon or person having a beacon and then some other computer seeing where that person is and, and knowing that there's a door and that they have permission to go in there. Um, I've been thinking about an app that I want to build about uh, a medical care for senior citizens. Uh, my mother had, had dementia, had Alzheimer's before she passed on, and the staff would always watch the people 
you know, and, and instead of having surveillance cameras everywhere, they would be roaming around keeping an eye out. But every once in a while, you know, my mom would get up and wander off. She was tired. She'd end up in someone else's bed instead of her own bedroom apartment. And then they'd have to go find her. Well, if, if you put a beacon on uh, uh, on a senior citizen like that, um, then you could see that they're moving, number one. You could see the, where they're moving to by just having a smartphone or a tablet or even a computer. So, yeah, the, the you could still have a beacon fence. I think, Jim, you met a guy in Chicago back in the springtime for the Delphi Developer Days who who – uh, does I think cattle management software? Yes, yep, exactly. It does cattle management software, and they're using Delphi and I want to say they're using NFC uh, chips on the cattle, so they could. Or was it RFID? Yes, it was RFID. That's right, RFID. And so as the cows were coming in, they would have someone stand there with a wand, and they would scan the cows as they walked by. And he was very interested in, in using beacons on the cows because they have a greater range. And uh, and more uh, more uh, effective in, in that yeah, regard. Yeah, they're very expensive versus everybody's got a smartphone. So you yep. just get app to the person who's watching the cows go by, and and that's instead of the early days, just you'd see the tags like on the ears or I guess brands, even if you went back to the 1800s, um, to see you know the cattle as they go by in the chute, you know, onto a truck or from one corral to another or, or pasture to another. So, yeah, I think he was investigating uh, using beacons instead of having these RFID tags and then these very expensive wands. Okay. I think we've gotten through the questions here. If you anybody – there's a question here about pictures of beacons. Um, if you just uh, – there was a – one of the first slides you had showed some beacon examples. If you Google it, there's lots of pictures online. Go to some of the websites that have uh, beacons as well, and you can find some. Um, there. So you didn't you didn't touch you touched briefly on the uh, I don't know if you did you touch about iBeacons versus Alt Beacons, but there's two different standards. Apple's came up with the iBeacon standard, and uh, then there's a what's called Alt Beacon, which is a uh, superset of the iBeacon standard, so it does everything iBeacons does and allows for more flexibility. But Apple was very restrictive about who could use iBeacons and on what platform. So all Beacon works everywhere. Um, there's Estimote. Estimote, I believe they were the ones that actually pioneered the Alt Beacon standard. Um, yeah, and then Google just announced a, a new specification called Eddie Stone. It's like the Eddie Stone lights, a famous folk song. About an Eddie Stone, about a you know searchlight, uh, so we have to take it. We're gonna, we're taking a look to see about that uh, that API. I mean, there's all sorts of shapes of and size of beacons. There's usually a small little circuit board with a Bluetooth LE chip and a battery, and the battery life depends on. Uh, well, here's a bunch of ones I think. Let's look at this one. So that's like the gimbal. It's this little blue tag, but you could actually rip out the casing and put it in whatever, you know, form factor you wanted. Yeah. And then there's the ones that are plugged into your mains AC current as, as opposed to ones that are plugged into USB or ones that are battery powered as well. So radius networks, rad beacon, for example, it's one of those. They're just, they have a US, it's a USB dongle and you just plug the USB dongle into your favorite, uh, AC adapter. Yeah, and I was, I was thinking maybe we could provide a list of ones we know work with it, but I they work with all of them. It's a it's a standard, so <laughs> I think as long as it's an alt I beacon or alt beacon standard, it'll work with uh, beacon. Yeah, sensing. microelectronics. We're using some of those. You've got Estimote. Uh, I've got some Nordic semiconductor beacons. We've got some gimbal beacons, which have their own standard, but you can reconfigure them as uh, I beacons as well. Yep. And uh, radius networks. Yeah. I think, yeah, we grabbed every beacon we could find, and it all just works the same once you uh, have them configured correctly. So, uh, Davis is saying the Sensoro Beacon Utility app detects the beacons when it's running in the background. How to do that with Delphi? On, on iOS, in the help file for Beacon Fence, there's a note about the uh, 
a, a version info key and values that you need to put in that then will get put in the info P list to allow you to run in the be in the background on an iOS device. Correct. So take a look at that and I'll add uh, that little text to my blog post. I just want to remind everybody I've updated my blog post since six o'clock this morning so the link is in the chat window and I'll uh, add a little note about iOS uh, background processing. It, it is in the help file so go into get it package manager from the IDE uh, do the buy now uh, you'll get the key, as I mentioned, you'll get an email that you get, and then it gives you a URL to register the key that you're given. Then you go, then close the package manager, relaunch it from tools, get it package manager, and the buy now will turn to an install. And then click on install, and it'll bring down the samples and all the, the runtime libraries and the interface units. And the help files also. And the help files, yeah, there's a, there's a help file. And then you'll, in your ID, you'll have Internet of Things with two components in it that I showed you. When you drop a component down, hit F1. Drop like the beacon map fencing component down, hit F1. And you get to the help. It'll show you how to use beacon fence, how to use the beacon fence uh, map editor. It talks about building a beacon fence app and, and the code you need to do. And it has the notes in there about the iOS. As far as Android, we're still working on for the future support for background. Correct. Uh, background serve for service for background processing. So uh, uh, yes, uh, for iOS you just set a, a an entry in version info and that goes to the P list. So the help go. Ahead. And then uh, I'll type in the answer to that. Let's see. John is saying when you were drawing the shapes, does Beacon Fence have the ability to draw diagonal lines or is it strictly 90 degree angles? Um, well, if you do circular you can force that circle to be a perfect circle or it could be any kind of oval or whatever. Yeah, right? you can make it a concentric circle, for example, or you could make it a, a, you know, an oval circle. You can, of course, also work with uh, polygonal shapes, so you can create a variety of different types of shapes that you can use as zones to map out your uh, building, for example, so that you can tr uh, trigger events depending on some if, if somebody's entering a zone, exiting a zone, etc. You can also use the path tool to set up paths. So, for example, if you wanted to build an application that allows you to do some sort of wayfinding, so for example, in a hospital, direct a patient through the hospital building to guide them to the room they're uh, going to, or in a, a school university building to guide them to a specific uh, office or facility as well, you could uh, use the path tool to uh, map out a path throughout your um, building using the Beacon Fence map editor. And you can use the polygon or polygonal yeah. tool to do any shape. I happened to do a T where I was tracing because we have in this office in Scotts Valley, most offices you have, um, you know, rectangles and things, but I wanted to show a multi, uh, a multi shape and so I drew out the T shape to get the hallways on either side and then the uh, open area here. But again, you could, with Polygon, you could create any shape. Correct. It's, it's extremely flexible and you can create shapes based on, you know, the area and how your building is set up. And just like David mentioned, certain buildings have, you know, you have to account for hallways, um, storage rooms, uh, you know, different different uh, setups within your within your building cubicles etc so you can create shapes that fit your particular layout of your building and there's a question here uh, Rhino it's it's a good question and and I, I we talked about it earlier today uh, in a previous question about could you build an app that knows how to process uh, beacon maps and the XML data instead of hard coding or loading in like I did very quickly just for a quickly quick example uh, the second demo showed how you could build user interface to load not only load maps but to set all the settings that you want uh, in the user interface all of the objects all of the properties all of the settings all the things that are in the XML for all of the zones and map objects beacon objects so on that's just all data that you could build at runtime. You could instantiate the component and uh, load maps and so on and that would fit. You, you, could, you could sell a pack of the museums of the world 
Yeah, and you could, you know, you can manipulate the uh, XML after the fact, of course, as well. So let's say you have a beacon that for some reason the batteries died or there's something wrong with the beacon and you're replacing it, you could then change the value of that beacon in your XML data. You could even store that XML uh, file in the cloud somewhere to be able to, to update it remotely. It's really very flexible for you to be able to change settings uh, as needed. Yeah, everything I've showed at design time or in the map editor, uh, that's ultimately just using parts of the runtime. So you can have code, a menu item that would load, or you could use uh, GPS to say, where am I before you went into, for example, a hospital, a museum, a stadium or whatever, and it could use that information to load uh, the XML information that was preset by someone for beacon locations, zones, and so on. Yeah, and then yeah. you can build an application, for example, where you're storing uh, users' you know, historical data, points of interest, you know, for example, within a building, they like specific restaurants within a mall or um, points of interest in a museum, as David mentioned. So you could really map out and show floor plans to them and, and basically offer wayfinding to specific points of interest based on uh, uh, you know, past behavior. And the same, of course, also applies to a retail space as well, mm -hmm. where you could show coupons based on past purchasing uh, you know, behavior, et cetera. So you could build an app that would allow an end user to build a map, to build the data for a map by saying here's where the beacons are and so on. Uh, or you could design all of that yourself and as you mentioned, sell it as a package. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see, great, I need this for a project for, okay. All right, Rhino, he needs for a customer of his. So absolutely, uh, you can hard code things, you can build it dynamically. Because again, these are just objects. So you could instantiate a beacon fence map component in memory, not drag it onto your user interface. And, uh, and if you have specific feedback, I would be more than happy to hear about how you're using Beacon Fence. So you can send me an email also. It's serena.dupont at embarcadero.com. Uh, with your feedback on Beacon Fence, if you have questions, I'd love to hear how you're using it. Uh, it's always great to hear from customers how they're using our technology. I know some of the things we were talking about, uh, and Serena was talking with the development team about where to put your beacons, how many beacons to put, and so on. Uh, if you have kind of a perfect circle and it's not too large, uh, you could put a beacon in the center of that circle if you create a, a perfect circle zone. Uh, if you're, if the zone gets too large, uh, the circle, like if it was a cricket field, maybe, you'd probably want to put some beacons on some of the outer points. Every couple meters or so. Yeah. And again, there was a question, of, and I added some to my blog post about the, the precision of the calculation of distance, and, and I put in there the links to a particle filter, which is part of the default calculation. Um, and, and the so, TX power setting also. Yeah, and then the other point, yeah, they were mentioning was you'll probably want to uh, calibrate your beacons because mm -hmm. different beacons... Uh, transmit at different power levels, which is fine, but then you might get a different uh, relative signal strength indicator. And there's, there are utilities that come with most beacons or there's third-party utilities and apps that let you calibrate the beacon properly. That has a lot to do with uh, the distance and location. And that's especially also important if you were using beacons by different manufacturers, for yeah. example. So they might be, they're all going to be pre-configured differently. So having that ability to calibrate them and set them according to you know your needs will make a big difference. I also added to the blog post another section about with some links to some beacon manufacturers that we use, mm -hmm. that we've tested with and the teams tested with, and also a couple articles that give a nice overview of some of the beacon, beacon manufacturers. Uh, so look for those at the end after the info links of my blog post today. Uh, the other area was where to place the beacons. Of course, you want to place the beacons if they're in a public area, in a secure area, so they don't, like, walk away. Yeah, and, and and place them in an unobstructed area as much yeah. as possible. So, you know, the ceiling tends to be a good spot because even people, as, you know, engineering told us earlier today, even people can be, of course, you know, obstructing the um, uh, the beacon if they're standing in front of it. So the ceiling tends to be a good point. Yeah. And of course, if you have very high ceilings, you might want to adjust that as well. If you have where, you know, if it's in a in a warehouse with very tall ceilings, yeah. for example. I'm I'm thinking the NASA's vehicle assembly building at uh, at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. That's the largest open space building I think on the planet. 
But if you were in a domed football mm-hmm. stadium, for example, you know you're going to have beacons here, there, and everywhere. Levi Stadium is is sort of open in the mm-hmm. center, but they have beacons all over. Um, but yeah, on a ceiling in an office building, those those are really good uh, places. Um, and you can even here in our office, we have these kind of lowered ceilings with metal metal grids, and then it's got uh, the drop ceiling. The acoustical mm-hmm. tiling for the drop ceiling, and there's power up there because it runs the lights and so on. So you could use the, you know, those USB dongle type or or AC powered beacons and just have them hidden up in the ceiling, uh, which would be great. And then you wouldn't have to worry about changing batteries all the time. And a great thing too is, of course, you can write an app that detects, uh, you know, the battery level of the beacons and lets you know, you know, what the battery level is, etc. So that gives you, uh, ad- you know, additional flexibility when you're deploying beacons throughout your building, for example, so that you know when to replace the battery. And the beacons use, uh, they use their own, uh, their own uh, low, it, it's a Bluetooth LE low energy transmission device. It has its own frequency mm-hmm. that it transmits on. And beacons, you can look at the information about beacons and, and our T-beacon and so on to look at uh, the protocol for beacons. Apple also defines the iBeacon protocol. There's Alt Beacon, and now there's the new Google Eddystone mm-hmm. specification API. So you can see what the packet format looks like. And then you can go to the Bluetooth.org website to look at the details about the, the frequency, uh, the radio frequency. And then you can look at the smart ready devices like iPhones, Android phones, and so on that are all uh, Bluetooth LE enabled, Bluetooth 4 enabled, uh, OS 10 as well. Windows doesn't have Bluetooth beacon support yet, although Microsoft has announced it, and 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 we'll 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 work with that when it's when it's ready, um, as far as the protocol and the data packets and so on. But it's uh, it's not RFID, it's not NFC, it's Bluetooth. So beacons are Bluetooth LE. Correct. They're Bluetooth yeah. LE devices. They have something called advertising packets, and then uh, they they broadcast that signal. And as you're walking around, for example, with your application that's uh, programmed to detect those beacons, you're able to pick up that signal, and then you can do different things based on that. You can provide uh, provide wayfinding. You could show a message with you know special offers in the store, for example, etc. Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily show a map. You you. Unless you were directing somebody, I, I'm waiting. I, I joked, and I'm waiting for the optimize my IKEA shopping experience, <laughs> so that I don't have to go through everything where all the hidden portals and so on to to jump around. But uh, your app might, as the I think the Macy shopping use case kind of said, it it's just giving you information about things that they believe and you have told them you're interested in, and they'll get you to those places. Yeah, and I think that's a great example. When you're thinking about a retail environment, someone might be using the official retail store application that includes their past purchase information, and you can set up zones and say, oh, you've entered the shoe department. We have shoes on sale based on your prior you know, purchase experience. You know, Walk 10 feet ahead and turn right. There's the counter for that particular shoe manufacturer, for example. Electronics. I know it, it, I'd go crazy in Best Buy if they optimized my experience to go right to all the cool stuff I want. Or Fry's Electronics, or right. you know, choose your favorite store, whatever it might mm. be, um, whether it's clothing and so on. So those use cases, and I have links to some of the stories about Macy's, Marriott, uh, Lord and Taylor, mm. uh, Regent Street in London. They got all of the the uh, businesses in on re- in this Regent Street area to have beacons inside of their stores. So there's a case of a of an area of a town. I think the uh, the Amsterdam uh, Beacon Mile is another example mm-hmm. where they've set beacons all along a mile stretch of uh, of the center of, of Amsterdam. So there's there's specific companies that are doing specific things in their stores. There's cities that are doing things. There's uh, areas of cities that are getting on this world of, of beacons and zones and and so on as you're as you're walking around with an app. And you could even have zones, you know, and of course also in a hospital, you could have zones to stri- restrict access management, for example, to different areas in a hospital building. The user could be logged into their official hospital app, for example, if they're a member of the staff and then as they're entering certain areas like the ICU or, you know, the x-ray area in a hospital, for example, that could be a predefined zone and it could check once the user enters that zone against that particular user and then check to see what permission they have, whether they're allowed in that building or not, and then you could, for example, lock or unlock the doors for that particular staff member. 
And there's no reason why you can't use a combination of GPS using the location component as well as beacons in the same application. So sure. if you're outside, you could use that for sort of coarse grain location if you're mm -hmm. moving between buildings, for example, and then have your app when you go into a building, look for see beacons and start switching into an internal mode. So you can mix and match. There's there's no uh, there's no nothing that keeps you from using both zone based fencing, uh, map based fencing mm -hmm. and uh, T beacon components themselves or the runtime sure. library on their own, as well as the GPS T location sensor component. So you can you can merge all of those together in an application that might be for a city, mm -hmm. um, indoor and outdoor. And Scott, the reason I did feet and inches is that uh, I, that's the measuring tape that I had uh, here in Scotts Valley. It wasn't a metric measuring tape, so I was measuring the, the hallways and the areas here in the office. But you can choose uh, inches, centimeters, and meters. Those are the three units of measure that when you create your map, you can choose what the setting is going to be. And that's one of the options in the map. And I, I should mention that that you saw in the in the final demo how you could think about building a more generic application and then have a set of different map and bitmap and XML files that you could load dynamically at runtime that would set all of the beacon locations, all of the the zones, the paths, and so on. You could even have a, an update mechanism, for example, to uh, let your users modify some of the information and save it back again. So you could, for your customers, uh, build uh, packs of uh, beacon fence map data for their different offices, their different businesses. Maybe they have different retail stores that have a little bit different layout, but basically have some of the same kind of information. And then, uh, you know, you could deliver all of that and just have different um, description data, key value pairs to declare what is a specific point of interest along a path or in for a zone or nearby and so on. And so that code is just going through a name, you know, a key value or name value pair uh, in a in a string in a string uh, a list. So pretty easy to go and do that in code, just a for loop. And all of this works in in Object Pascal in the C++ language. And we ship examples for all of that, as well as the examples that we shipped in the past for for Beacon. It, this technology is built on top of the same runtime as the Beacon components we had in XE8, just adding the functionality of, of either zone-based development or map-based development uh, in Beacon Fence, plus all the calculations and so on. You, you don't have to figure out the geography of your beacons, your zones, your areas. Uh, just by defining all of those in the object properties of all, of all the objects, uh, it tells you that you're in a zone, that you're entering and exiting a zone, what the points of interest are as you defined it inside of the descriptions. It's pretty ex expressive as well as expansive and extendable. You can even take over control if you have a different location algorithm you want to use. Uh, you can you can work with that. It's so going to get it package manager and purchase for free um, a license key and then go and install Beacon Fence and uh, get a few beacons. They're five, ten dollars. Uh, you know, put three beacons somewhere and start uh, working with Beacon Fencing and think about how you might use it for your customers to build apps for them or to find new customers that are in the warehousing, retail, point of sale, department store, mall, could be a, a stadium of some kind. You can define all the different zones. So if let's see over in Australia, New Zealand, maybe it's a cricket field and cricket stadium. Let's see, will any beacon hardware work with these components? The answer is yes, Nick. You can use any beacon that either shows up as an I beacon or an alt beacon. We support both of those. You may want to choose to use the same manufacturer beacons for an installation. Uh, you, that way you, you can calibrate the beacons in the same way 
uh, to make sure that they're all set up properly and then, and then put them in places uh, versus mixing and matching beacons. And do I have a review of the beacons? Two of the articles, Scott, that I have linked off my blog post uh, do give overviews of beacons. Let's see, how much overlap between beacon fields? That's a good question, Scott. As you saw in that second demo where you turn on sort of the beacon ranging as it's finding that, that kind of circle where the, the beacon is transmitting out to a certain point, you probably want to make sure that there's some overlap, depending if you're trying to limit the number of beacons, for example, because they do have a cost, uh, 10 bucks or five bucks, depending on quantity. Uh, that adds to the cost of installation. Uh, it doesn't take much signal overlap to be able to figure out the location. I don't have like a percentage of overlap, just that there should be some. But that's a good question, Scott, about uh, the overlap for beacons in the range. What would be good to help? And I'll, I'll see if the developers have some advice. And if they have something besides some overlap is good, uh, I'll put that and update the blog post. Okay, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the great questions. The help file comes with the beacon fence. There's sections in there for using beacon fence, uh, using the map editor, and information about the calculations. And Okay, everyone, take care. We'll see you next Tuesday, maybe, for uh, Nick Hodges' dependency injection. Bye, everyone. Take care.